Welcome to the Third Eye Show, which brings you ancient wisdom as well as cutting edge investigations into the mysteries of the universe. The Third Eye Show celebrates our diversity, like the unique beauty of each individual wave, and our oneness, like the magnificent ocean from which each wave emerges. We are all one in spirit as we live on this earth plane. The third eye is said to be able to see into the spiritual and psychic realms. At a time when our lives, our country, and our planet are undergoing intense transformations, we will explore topics that will fascinate, enlighten, and empower. Join us as we witness the thrilling ways spirit manifests in our daily lives and the varied paths we choose to create heaven here on our earth. The Third Eye Show is created and offered in love and light. According to the doctrine of reincarnation, you have probably lived many lifetimes here on Schoolhouse Earth. But how and what can you learn from these past lives? Why are they important? And how can you remember them? Tonight, the Third Eye Show's hosts, Lucia Reed and Patty McDonald, spend the hour discussing this fascinating topic. You'll even see the town in Ireland where Lucia once lived. So don't touch that remote. We perceive okay. time as though it were a river with past, present, and future coursing along in a logical flow, like the river's current. But I believe that in actuality, all time is happening now. Our loves, our lives are happening right now in this moment. So although we'll use the term past throughout this discussion, it's just shorthand. It's just for the sake of convenience. We're really talking about a simultaneous reality. So we probably should be saying other lives rather than past lives. But I don't know that we always will. We probably yeah. won't <laughs> we because probably most won't. people think of them as past lives right. and we want to we want to speak in a vernacular that's comfortable. All yeah, right. So I think so. we'll talk on the common usage. Right. That so that's why we're going to say past lives, but we understand that we really don't mean past. We mean other. Okay. So what do you think, Patty? Has everyone had multiple lives? Um, personally, I think that we have all had multiple lives. How many? Um, I don't know. Um, I think it's possible that many of us or most of us have probably had, um, have probably had hundreds of lives. Maybe more. I mean, I don't, I don't know. And I suppose there are also probably people who may be incarnating for the first time. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> you know, some people feel that people who are um, not well acclimated to the earth, that don't function very well, may be experiencing their first incarnation. I don't know if that's true or not. Mm -hmm. It's just a theory that some people have. But I totally believe that everyone has, um, has past lives. So I guess the next question is, what, how do you feel? about that, Lucia? Well, I, I agree with you. I think that probably <coughs> everyone we are going to meet here on Earth has had many lifetimes, because I think that um, we're evolving off the planet. I think as we learn the lessons that we're here to learn, we no longer need to be here. Right. And mm -hmm. so there are new people coming in. And that kind of answers the question. There's a common question people ask, well, how could there be so many more people on Earth now than right. there ever were in the past? And, and, you know, if these souls are reincarnating, where are they coming from? Well, they're coming from everywhere. They're coming from ev everywhere in the multiverse. Um, they're choosing to incarnate here. Uh, we choose to incarnate here. Because there's so here. much more than just our... <coughs> solar, our limited solar system. Yes. As vast as that may seem. Or even our yeah. universe. Even our universe. So they could be coming many, from many levels of reality from other universes. I yeah. mean, we don't. Who knows? Yes. It's just so vast and so. Um, it's actually in, inconceivable. It's, it is. It is. <laughs> so, so think about that. So not only do I think everyone has had multiple lives, but I think that we're coming in from all over the multiverse. I I agree with that. Um, but why should we care about that? That's a good question. Why should we care about that? I think, um, I guess one thing I'd like to say is that I think, <clears throat> and this may be a way of being, you know, being 
you know, humble in a way. I think that all of us need to realize that if we weren't, if we were totally evolved and if we had learned all the lessons that we needed to, we wouldn't be here. Mm -hmm. So that every living creature on the planet is here to learn lessons. Mm -hmm. And that this life on Earth is, is like a school. So we're here to, here to learn. Um, and I guess the reason that we should care about past lives, in my opinion, is to find out, you know, during this life, what the le those lessons may be. You know, what things we really need to know or need to learn. You know, mistakes that we may have made in the past that need mm -hmm. correcting. Mm -hmm. Either mistakes in the way that we behave or the way we live our lives or, or the ways <clears throat> that we relate to other people. You know, things that we may have done that, um, you know, patterns that need to be changed in some way. Mm -hmm. So what you're saying yeah. is that these other lifetimes have so much information to offer us. They have a lot to teach us. And can really help us. Exactly. So exploring them can be um, so beneficial for us. I think so. On so many levels. I, I think you're absolutely right yeah. about that. I think that's really true. So that's why we should care about past lives because there's so much to learn from them. Um, exactly. And I think we can learn from our past mistakes. Mm -hmm. We can learn from our past relationships. And again, I'm using the word past. Um, and I think that if we take a broader view, I like to sort of step back and, and really understand that, that I am not just this person, that I am a, an, an eternal being who has had so many experiences and vast experiences in, in so many different places with so many different people in different situations. And taking that step back and taking that broader view really helps me to keep this life in perspective and these experiences. When something happens that maybe is difficult or I experience a loss, mm -hmm. if I can step back and try to see this life and this loss in perspective, it's very helpful. So I think um, a, a view of our ourselves, of our real relationship with the universe, which is as cyclical beings, reincarnating beings, is really helpful to our spiritual growth. Yeah, so basically, I guess to put it in another way, and, and I certainly agree with what you said, yeah. <clears throat> but just to frame it in a different way, is that um, each time we incarnate, like say in this time, for mm -hmm. example, mm -hmm. like we and everybody who's watching this, everybody on the planet, is really just a soul or a spirit who's temporarily occupying the body that we're currently in, in this mm -hmm. lifetime. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And in, the, and, and in other lives, or past lives, and in future, lives or other lives, mm -hmm. you know, will be uh, um, the tenants of a, a different body. In some yeah. other culture. In some other culture, and perhaps. That, you know, and that understanding yeah. helps to break down prejudices and, and uh, cultural <coughs> stereotypes and that sort of thing. When you realize that you've lived in all different cultures, you yourself, you have been all over the planet. You've probably been all over the multiverse. I think that it helps to break down some of the, the silly things that we carry along. I think it does also. Okay, so um, another thing too, and this is, I don't know if I'm, if I'm being redundant here, but I think it's really important to remember that all of us have probably been, you know, every race or ethnicity or mm -hmm. religion mm -hmm. that there can be in every gender and mm -hmm. maybe other sexual orientation. Mm -hmm. So that, that, that should really help in us being like, like you just said, about being, you know, having more tolerance for people who are different from us. Mm -hmm. Because yeah. we have been all of, these, been different all of things these things at different times. So we really need to get over it. Exactly. Grow up. Um, so <clears throat> let's talk about soul groups. Now, what, what are soul groups? That's an interesting, I, I feel like soul groups um, are usually are groups of people who reincarnate um, over and over again together yes. you know and it's usually you know families yes like a soul family yeah close maybe close friends mm -hmm. maybe people you work with people that you know pretty well in this lifetime mm -hmm. usually have been in your other lives mm -hmm. although although perhaps not all of them maybe in each and every life well and i think that's yeah. an important point to, yeah. to keep in mind that um not everyone in your soul group is going to incarnate at the same time every time. Not every time. Not every time. And so if you're feeling kind of lonely or thinking, gee, I don't really have a family or I don't have a deep friendship with someone or I mm -hmm. don't have a mate 
and you know where where is that person for me is is that person does that person even exist i think the answer is yes that person does exist um you have those loving relationships deep loving true relationships with people who may not have chosen to incarnate this time around um they're there with you in spirit to help you they're there for all mm -hmm. of us to help us right right and they just may not be here in this in this life. particular life but this is only a moment in your collective life in your true life which is very broad eternal and huge it's just it's not just this narrow little moment that you're looking at right now actually a whole lifetime in the whole scheme of things is, is like a moment and yeah. also people in this I, I think people that that we know in this life could have we could have had a totally different relationship with for example someone who's your best friend might have been your your uncle mm -hmm. in another life mm -hmm. Okay, so basically, you know, people that we know in this life um, could be people we, that we could have unresolved issues with also from a past life. Absolutely. And sometimes, um, I think everybody has experienced this, whether or not you believe in, in um, other lives or past lives, that you sometimes you meet someone and for no apparent reason you feel like you don't like them and you just, or you don't take to them. Mm -hmm. Or you, you do take to or them. Or you do, or, or there's sometimes kind of an instant connection and you feel very... Mm -hmm drawn to that person mm -hmm. almost like you've I've known heard, him I've actually, forever yeah people have, i've heard people say that mm -hmm. god i feel like i've known you all my well, life well don't we feel that way yeah like we've we known do. each other we know yeah. we've known each and other and we know that we have mm -hmm. yeah although we had an interesting beginning yes we did <laughs> <laughs> we weren't crazy yeah. about each other when we met <laughs> so we kind, think maybe we funny. were sort of sisters you know yeah that maybe we had some sibling rivalry yeah. or something yeah i think maybe so we did. um so there's <laughs> those those kinds of feelings you know can come up either you know negative or, or positive or it's maybe just complicated, like mm -hmm. you feel like there's a lot of complicated stuff between you, mm -hmm. and there probably is, mm -hmm. you know, from the yeah. past. It probably is, but don't ever yeah. feel alone. It's exactly. really important to know that none of us is ever alone. We have loving spirit family and, and mates and companions on the other side. Even if you don't see them here and now, if they're not in your life now, they may be coming. Um, and we really need to hold on, hold on to that knowledge that they're here to help us, that we're here in the circumstances in which we find ourselves for a reason. So if you um, had to grow up without your mom or dad, or you are not in a loving relationship and you feel like, oh, what's the use? Uh, hang mm -hmm. on, hang on, because this is happening for a reason. You're not really alone. There are loving spirits around you and you're here in this circumstance right now in this moment for a reason so if you can have some faith and hang on and learn from whatever's happening now for each of us all, all of us if we can learn from the experiences that we're having um then we're we're doing our part that's what that's what this is all about that's why we keep incarnating right and so there may be a reason you know and in, in some lifetimes or in this lifetime maybe for some reason you're meant to have a more solitary life mm -hmm. and it certainly doesn't mean i think you said this earlier um and we we're off camera that um you know nobody should um get the idea that they should take their own life so that they can be with their soulmates right sort of jump ahead yeah, to that next life because i don't have think anyone that would ever do that i think you would come right back into the circumstance you find yourself in now because we need to complete the experiences that we're having yeah, because you wouldn't have learned the lesson that you need to need to learn that's right they're that, happening for a reason These, and i think sometimes we come into the same circumstances because we haven't learned the lesson and we have to it'll keep coming up again until we get it until yeah. we resolve it yeah exactly exactly so 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 just a word about soulmates so your soulmate isn't necessarily a romantic person, your mm -hmm. lover, your your dream love, whatever. Um, your soulmate could be your someone who's actually your antagonist in this life. This could, could be, be. Your, this could yeah. be a soulmate. Yeah, a soulmate is part of that soul family that we were talking about. Right? Well, you can have soulmates of different. Kind, you can have different soulmates. I sure. mean, you could have a soulmate that actually is your lover or a significant other, or sure. you could have a soulmate who's or a couple, you know, more than one, certainly, yeah. you know, very close friends or family members. Mm -hmm. So that, uh, you can certainly have more than, I think you can have more than one. I do too. I think we're life. really talking about your soul family. Yeah. When we're talking That's about soulmates.
Okay, so I think that um, before we incarnate in each life that on a soul level, mm -hmm. we make um, what, what I call a soul contract, mm -hmm. that we um, decide on a soul level, you know, who our parents will be, what location we, we will be in, will we be born in, in India? or the United States or Spain, you know, wherever that might be. Mm -hmm. And also we ch also choose the people that we will um, incarnate with and, and we're also part of their soul contract. Yes. And we may make a contract on a soul level to um, teach them and also to learn from them different lessons. Some of them mm -hmm. may not be pleasant and some people might say, my gosh, you know, who would choose to be born in a poor country? like Bangladesh, mm -hmm. you know, where people are starving to death, but for some, on a soul level, which is different than uh, our conscious self. Sort of 3D level. Yeah, sort of a 3D level, we make that, cho that, we make that choice. That, yeah. And probably in conjunction, I believe in conjunction with our spirit guides, mm -hmm. that we need to have that experience, even though mm -hmm. consciously we'd be going, who would, wanna, who would want that? Right. But, we, but we need the experience or else we wouldn't, we wouldn't have it. Right. So I think that's important to remember. Because when we are yeah. in 4D, when we are on the other side, we do have a broadened consciousness. Exactly, and, yeah. And so we understand the big picture and make our decisions for for our incarnations based on... Um, what we need. Yeah, based on that, yeah. that greater consciousness than we have when we're here in 3D experiencing these lives. Because we're spirit beings, so we're coming from spirit. We're not coming from right. emotion. We're not going, right. oh no, I'm, I don't want to do that. I don't right. want to go there. We're not, so we're not coming from that level at all. We're coming from mm -hmm. a much higher consciousness, right. a much higher that's level. Right, that's who we really are. So that's really important. So why do we forget that? Why don't we remember these past lives? Why can't we just pick right up on them and, and access all of this information at our fingertips? <laughs> what do you think? I, <laughs> well, I think that I'd I go insane I if I yeah. did. <laughs> that's what I think. I think that if I could remember every mistake I've ever made, every loss I've ever suffered, every, every hurt mm. I've had to endure, that I would be insane. I don't think I could bear to remember all of the partings over all the hundreds of years, um, and that it's really better for me not to remember uh, or to remember things that are helpful, only the things that are going to help me to learn my lessons in this life. I think there's a greater wisdom at work, and I trust that wisdom to help me to remember what I need to remember but certainly not everything. I think total recall would be, would not be a blessing. I, I totally agree. I think it's hard enough for many of us, <laughs> for many mm -hmm. of us to um, deal with our memories from this life, maybe mm -hmm. childhood memories or memories yes. of things that we don't feel real good about, yes. you know, the guilt that we have or, yes. or just pain, you know, painful things that have happened to us, mm -hmm. happened to us like loss you know, grief or broken relate, whatever, broken relationships, all sorts of things. So mm -hmm. it would just be so overwhelming that I think we'd never be able to even function because that's all we'd be thinking about. Exactly. So and I think that's the reason. I'd like to speak to that a little bit um, personally. Um, I have a very special relationship with Ireland, as anybody yes. who's known me for <laughs> five minutes knows. And I've been to Ireland many, many times. Um, started dreaming about Ireland when I was a little girl although I thought it was Scotland when I was a little girl. And I'm actually going to share some footage with you, so you're going to be seeing um, what I saw. What you're looking at now is what I saw when I was asleep. This is what I dreamt about, this very scene. That street, those houses, the water at the end of the street. That's what I dreamt about my entire childhood. And that was a very difficult life. Um, there were a lot of traumas involved in that life and that death, and that has been very difficult for me to integrate into this life and to get over what you're looking at now. This is, this is a former life of mine. You're actually seeing it. As we went to Ireland, we found the town, and we took pictures. So that's amazing. what you're looking at right now. Yeah. It is, it is amazing. Can you talk about for a minute what it was like so that people, other people might know what it was like for you when you went there? Like, uh, it took been... several tries for me to be there. Uh, mm -hmm. I got sick a couple of times. I, I phys got physically sick and we had to leave. I could not be there. It took a couple of tries. Uh, by the time I actually it took a couple of trips to Ireland. The first time we found the place, this is up in Donegal. Um, I knew that it was in Donegal. It was up, that's up in the north of Ireland. 
and um, we went looking for the place. My husband and I went looking for the town, and we found the town, and I got physically ill and couldn't be there, so we left. We left Ireland. Mm. You know, that was the end of that trip. We actually went back another time, and the first day that we went, as soon as we got there, I got sick. I could not leave. I, I was just mm. violently ill. Um, but we went back the next day. Unfortunately, the, next, the first day was nice and sunny and beautiful, and this, the next day when I'd gotten myself under control, it was stormy, and that's, that's what you're seeing. It was stormy and raining, and however, that's the day that I was yeah. able to be there, and that was really the beginning for me of, of integrating those experiences into my life. Now, I have a very complex relationship with Ireland. I think I've had many happy lifetimes there. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's uh, good. Because I love Ireland yeah. and, and can't keep away. And the smell of the peat and the, the, the mist and the rainbows, I mean, to me, that's the stuff that heaven's made of. I, I love it. Um, but I also have a difficult and tragic relationship with that town and that place um, that, that you know, I was showing you. So um, I was talking about dreams, that I first became aware of this place as a child when I would dream about it. So I think that we can remember our past lives in dreams. They can come through in dreams. Oh, I definitely think so. That's one of the big ways that they do come true, through. And I think that I was having this recurring dream because this was something I needed to integrate, I needed to do work with. And so that's why it recurred throughout my life until I finally did the work. I don't have those dreams anymore. Wow, that's so inspiring. That's really great. So, you know, yeah. if, if that ha is happening to you, um, I can't tell you what you should do, but I can tell you that this really helped me to find the town and do the past life regressions and spend time in prayer and meditation, asking for help and um, you know, doing the work that was needed to, to integrate these experiences. And remember here we're talking about you know, maybe having a memory of you know, a couple of lives. We're not talking about trying to remember them all. Oh, That's goodness, what would be no. overwhelming. Hundreds but, of lives. But <laughs> remembering a couple of them would cer could certainly be helpful as it was for mm -hmm. you, that it really was this, this eye-opening and mind-blowing. There was something there that I needed to, to deal with. And that's why it kept coming up to my consciousness. You know, it kept coming into my dream state because there, there were things there that I needed to deal with, I needed to face, I needed to work through. Um, so that's the one that came through. I'm sure there have been over hundreds of lifetimes, all sorts of experiences, tragedies, yeah. joys. We've all had. You know, all, we've all had the whole realm of experience. Um, but this was something that I needed to deal with. And so if you have something that's recurring, it's probably recurring because you need to look at it and see what you can learn from it and how you can grow from it and so on. That's why it's coming to you. Yeah, particularly if it's a place that you're, you're not familiar with, that mm -hmm. doesn't make any, that you don't know from this life or the people in the dream, the locale, anything about it is something that you don't know in this life. Some dreams about a city that I, told, I absolutely don't, don't know, mm -hmm. but it's not that often. It's once in a while and I, it doesn't, I'm like, what, where is this? I don't know. And I feel very, I feel afraid when I'm there in mm -hmm. the dream. I feel, I don't feel safe. It's kind of a little bit scary. So I don't know, I, don't, I have no idea where it is. I haven't gotten as far as you got. With that. Well, I've done past life regressions. Yeah. I, I think that that dream kept coming to me. That place kept coming up in my life because I needed to do that work, and so that it was just coming to me. Um, but but I think when you have dreams like you're mm -hmm. describing, that you can go through past life regressions. I so much want to. And you know, yeah. we could maybe talk a little bit about what a past life regression is um, to access. There are ways that you can access past life memories. And I'm planning on having one. We know we both know a regressionist. We do. And I'm planning on contacting him. To, I'm d really um, very interested in doing that. Yes, I had a regression with him. Did you know that? No, I don't think I. Yeah. Maybe I did. Yeah, yeah. It, yeah. Was, it was amazing. But he saw had, me. You've had others. I've as had well. others. Yeah, but yeah. he saw me sort of running through a field with all of these beautiful bright yellow flowers, and anybody who's been to Ireland knows what those bright yellow flowers are because they grow on virtually every hillside in the country. So that, wow. was, that was very... Um, That's very, very telling. Yeah, I thought that was very telling. So hypnotic regression is something you can do, and there are tapes. You can go to uh, hypnotherapists, and, and I would suggest that you do seek out a qualified therapist if you feel that you're having a problem or there's some trauma that you need to work through. Um, you know, you might want to seek out professional assistance 
I think so too, and I think you should also, it's probably a good idea to make sure that the person is trained in hypnotherapy. Mm -hmm. I mean, you don't want someone who's just sort of doing it without having any training, because you're really mm -hmm. getting into, um, it could be traumatic stuff. Very deep stuff. Very deep stuff, and so yeah. someone who isn't really trained, it could end up being maybe not being very, very difficult. Mm -hmm. Exactly. So I think that's important, for, you know, for that. But when something keeps thing. coming up, um, there, there's a reason. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of a red a flag. Yep. I think ev everything happens for a reason. Yep. But that, cer that certainly does. Yep. Now, what about other ways of accessing past lives? Well, there's what about um, there's astrology? astrology? I'm an astrologer, so um, I can sometimes, I, in, the, in a chart, I can tell not so much where a person was, like the location where they, where they were in, um, but I can see, you can see in the natal chart what some of the past life issues are mm -hmm. that, they, that people come in with, and also with some of the, the planetary aspects that are in the natal chart. And it's, it's really pretty accurate because when I tell people, I ask people if they want to know, because mm -hmm. some people may not believe in past lives or some people don't want to know, mm -hmm. but most people do. I mean, they really want to know. And when I tell them that, they, it really resonates with them. Mm -hmm. I mean, it makes sense. They're like, oh my God, you know, this is something I've been working on you know, for my whole life. So it really seems to, um, to hit home. I bet it does. It does. And there's another interesting story I'm going to tell about astrology and past lives. I think it was probably about 12 years ago when the show Unsolved Mysteries was on. Perhaps some of you remember that show. This it's Robert Stack. Mm -hmm. It was, you know, it was if pretty... You. Yeah, if you. Person. Yeah. <laughs> right. It had many things about criminals and then some, uh, you know, some sort of um, mysterious or mm -hmm. um, quote-unquote supernatural things. Mm -hmm. But anyway, one episode, one show, they devoted the whole hour to the show mm -hmm. about a man who I think at the time was in his 30s. Um, See, so he was probably born in this life around 1960 or so, and he was he had recurring dreams since childhood about drowning in a submarine, mm -hmm. since childhood, and they just were re unrelenting. They just mm -hmm. wouldn't go away, mm -hmm. and finally he managed to get more information. I guess he asked, you know, his higher self to give him more information, and so he managed to get the name of the person, you know, of who that person was in the dream, and then he actually found the family. He looked. It's a long story. I'm not, I'm gonna shorten it so I won't take up the whole rest of the time that we have, but he managed to find this family, um, and this was during the early 40s, and it was true that um, this person did, you know, drown in a submarine, mm. and the family, his brothers and sisters by now were elderly, but there were things about the house, the place where they still lived in the same home. Still alive. Yeah, you know, where, where he grew up in. And mm -hmm. there were things that he knew about the home and about the family that you couldn't find on the internet. I mean, they were very personal things. And so, and this family was actually very open to it and they accepted him. It was really Amazing. pretty mind blowing. And then being an astrologer, I was like, oh my gosh, I have to get the two charts. And this is the most amazing them. part. This is, and so um, I searched and searched on the internet, and somebody actually had both charts. You now his current natal chart and the natal chart of the the pri the other person that he was, who was probably born in the who was born in the twenties, mm -hmm. in the nineteen twenties. And when I looked at those two charts and compared them, my mind was blown. I mean, I had chills going through me. Um, the technicalities of it would be difficult to explain if you're not an astrologer. But there were so many parallels between the charts that you would expect. Mm -hmm. from one life to another, like the same, some issues, you know, that are similar issues, and also there were karmic um, ties, and also you could see in the chart from the 1920s, from when he drowned, I mean, you could see that in the chart, because I th there was also, the, the time of death in, in that life was also revealed, so I had that to go by, and you could see that, mm -hmm. you know, that he drowned. Mm -hmm. And in this chart, that, that planet was strong in this chart, and there was some fear around. He had a fear of, of water, obviously, because you know, he had to have not kept having that dream. There's a lot more to that, but I'm not going to... I think that is the most amazing but story. It's so amazing. It just yeah. it blew me away. Yeah. So, of course, right away I was on the phone calling all my astrologer friends and yeah. saying, oh, my God, oh, my God, you won't believe what I have here. It was just really... It's incredible. Incredible. It was what an incredible experience. Yeah, it was. And it how was. rare to be able to see someone's chart from the, yeah. their current life and another life. Because before that, it's I used to amazing. say, wouldn't it be great if we could actually have access to somebody, to yeah. our previous charts and actually see the um, progressions yeah. and the lessons? Yeah. Because each chart has certain 
you know, his issues that we're working on, sure. you know, life lessons. So that was, wow, that was just a gift. Oh, it was amazing. Absolutely amazing. <laughs> it was. I love that story. It really was. Me too. <laughs> Um, another way that we can access information about past lives is through the tarot. Absolutely. And Patty and I both read tarot cards. And um, I know that what when I'm giving a tarot reading, there are a lot of people in the room. Um, right. I always think of it that way because the, there are. all the spirit guides are in the room and, and people who have passed who are on the higher side who may have something to say or, or you know some encouragement or information are in the room. Um, guardian angels, whatever yeah. you think of them as, uh, they're in the room. There are lots of. I always think that there are lots of people in the room, and that when I'm getting the information, I, I, I believe that I'm getting the information from them. The information is perfect, and it's, it's coming so from a perfect accurate. source. A a a absolutely. And of course, the your higher self, your spirit guides, your guardian angels, your your you know, um, your soul family. These people have access, these spirits have access to your, all of the information, the whole Akashic records. And it makes sense. I've had people say, yeah. oh gosh, you know, I had a past life regression and that's exactly what came up in it. Yeah. So the yeah. tarot really, I feel, you know, can reveal that information yes. Yes. sometimes. So that's another That's source. another tool, another yeah, source no, yeah. for that. And there, I'm sure there are lots of, of other ones, but we're just sort of, we have to just skim the surface in our, in our yeah. hour. Well, prodigies. I think prodigies are very interesting. I do too. You know, you look at somebody yeah. like Mozart. He's writing. He wrote his first opera when he was twelve. Right now, where does that come? Where from? does that come? Where from? does it come from? You think that's just yeah. a lucky happenstance that I don't he's, think he was so. touring, yeah. gi giving European tours at six? <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. I don't think so. Don't know, the day he was born, that. he had been a musician for. 500 years. Yeah. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> or maybe longer. Was yeah. six. Forget about it. This guy had been, you know, was a master musician, had been a master musician for a long, long, long time. Yeah. He yeah. was not just picking it up, you know. Can you imagine the first time Mozart sat down at the piano? What <laughs> happened? <laughs> Do you think he was, you know, kind of honking out chopsticks? I don't, I don't think, think so. so. No. <laughs> I don't think so. Some people never take a music lesson in their life, and they have these beautiful voices. Mm -hmm. and or just, just have an affinity for something. Or just something. have an affinity for, for math, or for, for languages, or for Or for deep music. sea diving. The first yeah. time you do it, you say, wow, this is for me, and, and you just feel at home climbing. there, yeah. or whatever it is. Um, it's because you've done it in other lifetimes. Or astrology. I mean, or I think astrology, I was I'm probably yeah. an astrologer. Yeah. Before. I have no doubt yeah. that, you know, the psychic abilities that I have in this life... Um, have carried over that you know I've been developing them throughout my lives. I think so. I so definitely I think, think know, so. Yeah, I think that's true for all of our abilities, whatever they may be. You're yeah. terrified of water, and you ask your parents, you know, was I? Did I ever have an experience with water, even when I was a baby, that I wouldn't remember consciously? Mm -hmm. And they say, no, there really, no. there really wasn't anything. I mean, so that could be a pat something from maybe you drowned in a past life, mm -hmm. a fear of heights, mm -hmm. and maybe something happened. And maybe you fell off a cliff, you know, mm -hmm. who, who knows what it might be. And I've often yeah. read in, in books on um, past life regression that when someone goes through regression experiences, sometimes those phobias are released. You know, th those phobias I've heard come that, to yeah. an end. You no longer experience them when you go through the experience of, you know, that when you are able to recall the memory.
children are, probably have more memories than anyone. And I think in our culture, mm -hmm. because we don't really you know, put a lot of stock in that or we don't encourage it, not everyone, but many people mm -hmm. will just sort of um, blow it off and basically just say, oh, you know, he's just being silly. Mm -hmm. Or, oh, stop saying that. You know, there's no, um, there's no man in your room or there's no mm -hmm. little girl in there, or whatever the thing might be. And sometimes kids, my friend's little girl said something like, um, she used to like to help her mother clean. And she said, I used to do this before when I was a mommy. Mm -hmm. But I think it's really easy to dismiss children Mm -hmm. It's just being silly or just making something up or just fantasizing. You know, when you hear that three-year-old say, when I was a fireman, <laughs> and you just yeah. ignore it. And, you know, maybe the three-year-old is just playing, and maybe he was a fireman in his, in the, an, an, at another time, another time, in quotes. Um, and maybe there's something that you could explore with him. And sometimes if a lifetime was recent, you know, they still do have, you know, those memories you know, if then and then if they're not followed up on, then they just kind of keep going and they gradually forget. Yes. We also have uh, reenactors. Yeah, I guess we, we can't list. really go into it too deeply, but we can no. maybe just touch upon it because I think it's very interesting. Are you perhaps a reenactor yourself? Are you having glimpses of past life memories? Because many, many of them are. Yeah. And there's a reason why I think that brings up the whole thing of being attracted to a certain time period, a yeah. certain event in history, yeah. a certain place. Barbara Lane is a clinical hypnotherapist right. who studies reenactors, and she conducts past life regressions. She's fascinated by reenactors. Um, she wrote a book called, I'm looking for the name of her book, Echoes from the Battlefield. Echoes from the Battlefield. I know oh, that yeah. she also yeah. wrote a book about people uh, from the Middle Ages here, Medieval Halls, Past Life Memories from the Middle Ages. That one I haven't read. I would love to read that book. I want to get that book. Why would, why would this segment of society have a lot of clear memories? Well, if you think about what they went yeah. through, these are people, we're talking about battlefield, battle memories. These are people who died probably young, very traumatically, yeah. very suddenly. What about people, you know when you go, and we, my husband and I, when we travel, sometimes we'll visit someplace, like say, I don't know, like Plymouth Plantation or mm -hmm. other places, mm -hmm. and there will be people there who will be dressed in the costumes of that period, like sort of, Mm -hmm. you know, pretending, you know, acting like the people who lived there then and dressing like them and talking mm -hmm. like them. Mm -hmm. And so that's very similar. Even, very much. Yeah, e even though they do it every day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Have you ever yeah. noticed the, the folks, mostly guys, um, <laughs> who are crazy about trains and who'll take pictures of the yeah. train pulling up and I don't know, maybe it's because I'm not that crazy about trains, but it strikes me as though that that seems to me kind of excessive yeah. <laughs> and I've often thought that these are people who probably were involved with trains recently in recent other experiences were conductors when there were that. a lot more trains there's some time there's some place that you have a particular affinity for it may not be an obsession I mean it may not be the thing that you're dreaming about all the time but but there's something there that really that calls to you that really speaks right. to you whether it's that Florentine style it's something about that that style that time and place or or whatever it may be uh, you know what it is there's some time and place that speaks to you and I think that you should listen to that voice that's speaking to you uh, because it has something to tell you Okay, well, since we've been talking about reincarnation, um, I think it's fitting that we talk about karma, because that's such a huge, um, it certainly relates to that, and I think that there are a lot of misconceptions out there about yeah. that. Maybe we can, you know, say what we think and just mm -hmm. give people some food for thought. That sounds great. Yeah. Okay. So, so well, what does karma mean? What is karma? I think, um, basically, it's, it's kind of a law of, um, law of cause and effect. Um, and I think a lot of people think of it as being a form of punishment. Like if I do this in this lifetime, in my next lifetime, um, something I'm going to be punished or something terrible is going to happen to me. And it's really not 
about that. I, th I don't think. I believe that it's about um, learning lessons that we need to learn. Yeah, I think that's a really simplistic view of yeah. karma. Um, the punishment. The punishment thing, thing. Yeah. yeah. The word karma just means action. Uh, and I love yeah. this. And the Buddha said, we are the heirs of our own actions. What better way could it be said? Yeah. I, that's, he said it a lot better than I just did. That's so great. <laughs> we are the heirs of our own actions. Um, so on the, that one simple level, it does mean action. It does, yeah. But, you know, I sort of think of karma as functioning on many levels, just the way we do. You know, we're, we're physical beings, but we're so much more than that. There are so many layers of meaning and layers of energy and, and layers of, our, of who we are, going right up to the infinite. And we're so complex in so many ways. It's the emotional and the spiritual, like you just said, that connects yeah. to the whole universe. Yeah, that whole energetic level. Yeah. There's so many things happening at once. <clears throat> uh, there's so much more happening with any individual person than just that person you see, than that action, that 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 person is taking and so when uh, we're creating karma with our actions karma that we're creating also has so many more levels to it than the simple action we've just exactly. taken. Exactly and it kind of know? it's like a ripple like throwing a stone into a, a pond I mean it just ripple has this huge ripple effect on other people in our lives who are, I believe are in our lives because we need to learn something from them and basically mm -hmm. karma is something I believe it's not a punishment but something a lesson that maybe we didn't get, something we didn't learn mm -hmm. in a past life, and so we need to be reminded of it and ha or have it repeated, and so we may draw people to us in a lifetime or have circumstances in our life to so that we can learn that particular lesson. Absolutely. I think yeah. that we actually, uh, going along with the, that thought that you just brought up, Patty, I think that we actually choose before we incarnate, we choose. Absolutely the families we're going to be born into and the circumstances in which we're going to find ourselves so that we can work through ca our karmic issues. I th on a soul level, I think we do. I think um, if it wasn't on a soul level, none of us would make s certain choices because well. people are pro maybe sitting out there and saying, well, who would choose to be born in a poor, you know, war-torn country with not, not enough to eat? Mm -hmm. But on a soul level, the emotion isn't in it. It's more like, what do, what do I really need? What does my soul need mm -hmm. to be nurtured and to learn and to grow? And so that's the level that we do it on. Or to teach. Or to teach, even. Or to teach. To I be mean, involved in someone else's karmic lessons. Yes, uh, sometimes both, we come both. in um, I as so-called, uh, we're disabled, I'll put that in quotes, because I, I believe that people who are, let's say, mentally disabled, mm -hmm. mentally incapacitated, whatever, are some of the, they're coming here for their PhDs. Absolutely. They're coming yeah. in to teach other people about um, acceptance, and they come just with beaming love. You can tell these are very advanced souls. They're beaming love, and they're giving us the opportunity to... Um, be patient, to be compassionate, to be loving. They're teaching us all of these things. So sometimes I think we come in with certain so-called disabilities or that sort of thing in order to help other people. Some people, it seems, you know, um, have more difficulties or tragedies in their life. Mm -hmm. <coughs> but those are also lessons that they chose you mm -hmm. know, before they incarnated. And I, and I think we also choose our parents, you know, and choose the, the people that will be in our lives. Yes. However, it's, I don't think it's that <coughs> simple. It's not as, we can't just take it on that level. Again, that's putting it on that simple level. No, it's level. not like we go, well, okay, I'll take parents B A. You know, right, and I'll like have that. these experiences, and I will have, you know, 14 boyfriends who beat me up. This is my karma. There's nothing I can do about it. There is something we can and do we about it. Control, that's the impo a very important point. That it's we a do really have important point. Control over it. Yes, and you hear people criticize the whole <coughs> concept of reincarnation and karma, and, and they'll say, well, you know, if reincarnation is true, if karma is true, then why bother trying? Because everything is set in stone, and there's nothing you can do about it. And... If one's present life is totally conditioned or wholly controlled by our past actions, then karma must be indistinguishable from predestination, okay? If this is true, free will is an absurdity. And life not is so. mechanical and perfunctory, and we know that that's not true. In fact, karma is, again, it's functioning on so many different levels, on subtle levels. So 
we may be born into a situation that's difficult with a difficult parent or difficult circumstances, but we can transcend that. We, we can, can overcome change them. that. I mean, I mean, how we react to the situations that we're in or the people that are around us or whatever, how difficult they may be. We have a choice of whether to work on it and overcome it, and that's learning the lesson. Absolutely. We that's don't have to go it. from boyfriend to boyfriend who beats us up. We do not have to do that we can make the choice and transcend that. The first time it happens, it might be karma. It might be a karmic connection. Some, oh, sort, totally. of, some sort of debt, some sort of self-hate that you're you know, still experiencing or whatever. But that doesn't have to continue. The whole point of karma do is change. for us to learn and grow. That's why it exists. And I've seen people transform from being in relationships oh, so like I'm, that or being in terrible situations. We've changed, I'm sure, throughout our lives. We've learned. We all have. I, mean, I think everybody yeah. is, is constantly evolving, so it's not yeah. um, predetermined to that extent. We have choices. So we can you know, change um, our destinies and take these lessons and learn and change how we, how we do things. Yes. Choose not to be in abusive relationships and choose, um, choose not to associate with people are not healthy for us and not to do work that we don't like. Or to, to learn to love ourselves. Or to learn to love ourselves or to love others or to have compassion. To love others. I, yeah. For example, I think that forgiveness, for example, um, through forgiveness we can transcend karma. Uh, tr forgiveness, you know, that grace transcends karma. And that when we take a big evolutionary step forward in our spiritual development, in our spiritual evolution, we can transcend karma. Karma is here to serve us, Absolutely. to help us learn and grow. As we learn our lessons, we no longer need to have certain experiences. So we may have done X, and according to Newton, Y should occur. But karma is bigger than Newton's physics, and if we transcend it we don't have if we learn from it we don't have to experience why you know, we don't have to keep repeating repeating it again because we've gotten it it's we've not mechanical it. yeah we've learned the lesson and we've <laughs> right. moved beyond it or transcended it <coughs> or just you know totally evolved from that right because it's not mechanical this is a dynamic um, a dynamic it's principle. It's a dynamic growing living thing I and mean, it really is it it's really what, is the, and the whole universe is connected with it. Right. And you know, every living thing is involved in it. So if somebody says to you, well, reincarnation and karma don't make sense to me because then life is just mechanized and, and um, you why know. Why bother? Why, b why bother trying? Remember, it's something that's dynamic. This is a dynamic principle in your life that's about your evolution and your growth, all of our growth. Um, mm -hmm. And that's the point of it. So it's not necessarily, uh, you know, an opposite and equal reaction. Uh, it's about learning. But you, when you s spoke about forgiveness yeah. and forgiving others and also forgiving ourselves, I think that that's one of the hardest things to, to do. Mm. And, s and sometimes forgiving oneself can be the hardest thing. So I think that is probably mm -hmm. a lesson for a, a lot of people. I know it is, it, it is for me, like a, something that I'm always kind of working on. Well, and tying that, that in with past lives. Exactly. You know, yeah. we often bring these issues forward from past lives. And... Um, we need to forgive ourselves for things that have happened in other lifetimes. And we may come into this life feeling resentful about ourselves or feeling diminished about ourselves because of some action or something that happened in a past life. And not really knowing why. And not really know why. Um, if that happens, I think that past life doing some past life work can be very helpful, again, with someone who's qualified with a qualified hypnotherapist. I wouldn't do this with a girlfriend. Yeah. yeah, it's not something to go to, to fool around with. Yeah. <coughs> because you're really getting into the, you know, very deep. Into yeah, the it's, it's serious stuff. But um, doing some past life work of that type can really help us to maybe get in touch with our karma and understand what it is that we need to um, transcend. What do we need to work on? What is it that, that perhaps is holding us back or that, that is, is impelling us to... Um, make the same decisions over and over again, that, you know, the same destructive patterns. Exactly. Right? So with karma, we can, uh, with the knowledge of our karma, we can sort of overcome that. Right. So, so to, <coughs> to me, um, the opposite of seeing it as um, fatalistic mm -hmm. or, oh, why bother? I mean, to me, it's like a, re a living, exci a really exciting opportunity. Yes. In this life to do that. 
Yes, this is the principle yeah. through which we learn. Um, we create all of these beautiful situations. We can create anything we want in our lives. Anything that we believe we can yeah. make. I mean, it's said if you can visualize it or see it, then you can, you can make it happen. Yes. And I, I believe that that's true. I know that that's yeah. true. I know that that's true. It is true. It is true. Um, that our lives, the life you see on the outside, is a reflection of the life you feel on the inside. It's Absolutely. a reflection of your dreams and your hopes, your prayers, your fantasies, your aspirations. And if you change those, the way you feel about yourself, if you change those things to, and start focusing on positive and loving images, that's what you'll create in your life. And it will change your life. And, and it will change your be, karma. I'm totally amazed and it will change your karma. It will change your karma. It's amazing. It's beautiful. I it mean, is. Really it's very empowering. It is. So uh, to me... So instead of being de deterministic or fatalistic, right? I, I see it that way too, as a great opportunity for growth. Yes, and totally yeah. empowering. Totally empowering. Because each one of us is in charge of our spiritual development. Yeah, think how exciting that is. That you can do anything. Yeah. And I do mean anything. But that's one thing you really are in charge of. Yes. <laughs> is yourself. Yeah. And that's really very cool. So very we can exciting. use our karma to grow and to learn. To grow and learn. And, and even change. when something feels like a kick in the seat of the pants. Which some, sometimes it does. Which sometimes it does. Yeah. Um, that too is an opportunity for growth. It may not feel like an opportunity you want at that particular <laughs> time, <laughs> no. but afterwards, you know, we'll say, you know, I I will say, um, God, I really, l I really got something out of that, and I know that it happened for a reason. That you know, I needed that to happen. Or if that hadn't happened, I would have stayed in that situation or stayed with that person oh, or whatever forever. I probably never would have made that needed change. So yeah, it felt like a kick in the seat of the pants at the time, but boy, look but where I am now. Best. Yeah. And sometimes people say, well, maybe it's for the best. And a lot of times they're absolutely right. Well, there are, it's always for it the best. It usually is, because if it wasn't, it wouldn't have happened. It happened because it was supposed to happen. Right. It's always for the best. Everything that happens yeah. ultimately is for the best. Even though it it's may an be opportunity, painful. Even if it, though it yeah. may be painful. It's an opportunity for growth. It's an opportunity to forgive. It's an opportunity to grow in love. Yeah. It's an op opportunity to use those karmic experiences to heal. And to be more uniquely ourselves, to be ultimately happier. Mm -hmm. It's just, um, so I hope that um, maybe this has given you some food for thought. Maybe you um, you can see karma yeah. and reincarnation in a, a little bit different light. Um, and maybe it'll help you see your own life or your own situation, whether it's positive or negative, probably a mixture, mm -hmm. which life is. Or <coughs> changes that are happening as being opportunities for learning and growth mm -hmm. and ultimately love. So just take charge of your life. Don't be afraid of it and love. Thanks. Thank you. According to the Rough Guide to India, quote, it is impossible not to be astonished by India. Nowhere on earth does humanity present itself in such a dizzying, creative burst of cultures and religions, races and tongues. Enriched by successive waves of migration and marauders from distant lands, every one of them left an indelible imprint which was absorbed into the Indian way of life. Every aspect of the country presents itself on a massive, exaggerated scale, worthy in comparison only to the superlative mountains that overshadow it. It is this variety which provides a breathtaking ensemble for experiences that are uniquely Indian. Perhaps the only thing more difficult than to be indifferent to India would be to describe or understand India completely. There are perhaps very few nations in the world with the 
enormous variety that India has to offer. Modern day India represents the largest democracy in the world with a seamless picture of unity in diversity, unparalleled anywhere else. Keith Bellows, Vice President of the National Geographic Society said, there are some parts of the world that once visited get into your heart and won't go. For me, India is such a place. When I first visited, I was stunned by the richness of the land, by its lush beauty and exotic architecture, by its ability to overload the senses with the pure, concentrated intensity of its colors, smells, tastes, and sounds. It was as if all my life I had been seeing the world in black and white, and when brought face to face with India, experienced everything re-rendered in brilliant technicolor. <laughs>